So uh, we're here at the Sheffield PTQ with Neil Rigby, who currently is 2-1. I'm not going to tell you what deck he's playing, because one of the themes we're doing exploring today is testing processes and how you come to decide on the deck you're doing well with. <laughs> and how, well, just basically how you decide on what deck to play and why you didn't play other decks you maybe thought were also good. And you got an interesting slant because uh, I've been watching, as I've quite a lot of other people, but you've been doing a lot of streaming on this um, on the internet. So there's websites where you can broadcast yourself playing like YouTube, but it's live. So it's people can see you playing live at your home on your computer. You're playing this game on online across the internet. People can watch you and hurl abuse at you or ask you questions, anything like that. How do you think that's changed how your t t testing process would normally be? Um, well, it's actually one of the main reasons I started streaming was because what I was doing was a lot of Limited. I played a lot of Limited on Magic Online and I wanted to get more into Constructed because I've got quite a good collection on the Magic Online. Um, so I thought one of the ways to do that um, was to start streaming because that will push me to do it more and more. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do was improve my constructed game like mulligan decisions cyborg and things like that okay because um because you're known as a limited player is it two top eights you've had for grand prix which are limited grand prix yeah yeah okay but you've not had quite the same success with constructed all the time you've had some of course but not yeah. not the same way no no not at all and it, and like i said it's like um i was hoping that by stream i would fill holes in my game because i'm well aware that when it comes to sideboarding i don't often i often don't understand which cards need to go out and which cards need to come in and like I've only been streaming for like a couple of weeks and already like today I feel a lot more confident in my sideboarding and the sideboard choice I've made have felt like they're the right ones um, which is literally just from playing more because it wasn't like I've not even played this deck online while I've streamed. Okay, so do you think it's the case that it's, it really is simply that you've been playing more? So had you been playing but not streaming it, you would be in the same position as you are today? Or do you think the, the fact that you can bounce your ideas off of people who are watching your stream, do you think that has had a significant effect? Um, well, the main thing that the stream has done, like I said, is like if I wasn't streaming, I'd almost certainly just be doing drafts and playing limited because I find that more fun. Whereas, like, by streaming, I've sort of allowed myself to sort of treat it as a task, but, like, not an onerous task it's something I've been, like I've enjoyed um, and basically it's something I always say is people don't play enough magic they think they do but they don't um, like one of the lads I've been talking to today has done about 150 hours in the last couple of weeks to practice for this and that's a lot of magic and like there's almost certainly most people in the room have done nowhere near that and they'll think they've tested enough and he doesn't think he's tested enough and I, I played against him in round two and he was like I've not played this match anywhere near enough a lot of the stuff I've done is theoretical um, so by starting to stream I, like I said, I've turned it into a bit of a, a task that I can do and a lot of people act of, are saying they're finding it useful because they get like I said because I get to talk to people as I'm doing it um, they, like I said, they can bounce. At, we can bounce ideas off each other, and I can like, what do people think as to which cards go in and out, yeah. and that helps me understand. Like, also from the other deck point of view, they can be like, oh, I've played this deck, and the cards that I'm really scared of when I'm playing that deck are these, so I know like, oh right, well I won't take them out because I might have done and things like that. And it really helps in that regard. Okay, so as also uh, one of the recommendations a lot of people give for testing is that you should play with people who are better than you. But by watching people who are better than you, that's almost like you're yeah. playing with them because you get to see what they would have done. So you, you, you get a lot of airtime, almost testing time, just by watching someone else play the deck. Yeah, like, um, without wanting to sound arrogant, like they, I'm one of the better players in the area that I'm around, so like it, it's difficult to always test with people that are better than you. So like playing online is really helpful for that because a lot of the people who play online play online a lot and are very good at the decks they play. Um, and like I said, um, the lad I was talking about who's done the Lords of Testing, he's been watching me stream and he was like, I found it really useful and I've learned stuff. And uh, like he's been very active in the chat as well. So that's been really helpful. So yeah, like I said, it's like what, watching somebody who's better than you and being able to interact with them and ask them, why they've done the things they've done is really helpful and helps like essentially cheat on the testing time well yeah well i wouldn't even say it was cheat i would say it was testing time with yeah. if you take it with a pinch of salt it's not 100 percent the same yeah. but anyway so that's that's streaming and how it's affected your testing process but your testing process in general like um 
at what point do you think you pick a deck and, and think, think that's the one I have to play and I need to practice it now? Um, well, I tend to play a lot of, because I play a lot of Magic, I play a lot of the decks. Like, bizarrely, the deck I'm playing today um, was chosen quite late because one of my friends is very good at finding where the meta game is and picking the right deck. So uh, for those that have been following, Neil's also on the bandwagon and uh, has been collaborating with this, this same fellow. Yeah, um, and it, to be fair, Matt is very good at finding which deck to play and like we played the Jun deck the first time in Chesham and I made top eight there and then it was like, all oh, right, well, the Slippery Bogle enchantment deck's really well positioned at the moment because these decks have gone out and this is popular. And then we played that, and I made top eight with that. And then, like, it was, I'd been playing the Naya Blitz deck, which has incredibly fast starts. And I'd also been playing the red, white, blue flash deck a bit. Um, and then I played Bant Delver as well, and I really wasn't a fan of that. So I was looking, I was looking at playing the Naya Blitz deck. And then Matt was like, actually, the, like, going back, we'd, we'd played the Aristocrats deck a bit, and then it sort of fallen out of favour, and he was like, the, the new build of it that they've come up with really good. Um, it's really quite difficult to play, so the fact that I get to play with it a little bit and then be a little bit better than other people really gives me a bit of an advantage. Okay. So, so just for a bit of context, the new Aristocrats deck, it's based on the Sam Black team deck that Tom Martell won the Pro Tour with, but now they've added Blood Artist and Blasphemous Act to get more combination with Boros Reckoner and yeah. just more ways of dealing your opponent damage without actually having to attack them. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it's really powerful, having, like playing with it now, it's like, it's, it's really quite resilient to um, early attacks, you've got a lot of early drops to just block and prevent the damage, and then, especially with Shocklands being really popular, um, you can get a lot of like free damage that way, and then like you just nibble them with a cartel aristocrat, and then suddenly you're like make a Boris Reckner, Blasphemous Act, and you're just dead from nowhere. Okay, so did you think you did you realize was it an active process for yourself to think actually I remember that deck, and with these tweaks I think it will be good, or do you think you listened to the advice of someone else having having tested it yourself, and you know you you've got an awareness of the meta game, but do you think you take the lead from someone else in terms of what deck to play, or do you think it's something you actively decide for yourself? A lot of the time I take the lead from Matt because like he's, like I said, he's got a proven track record of picking very good decks. Um, what, what he's quite bad at doing is playing that deck himself because he's been, like I've been to a bunch of PTQs where he said, oh, this is the deck you want to play. He's played something else and then that person's gone on to top eight or win it. Um, but like, like I said, he's got a proven track record of picking the right deck. So I'm, if he says this is the deck one like the decks he suggested for today were either the mono red deck or the aristocrats deck and i felt like the aristocrats deck had a reasonably good match against the mono red deck and and against the naya blitz deck and was positioned in such a way as to allow me to use my years of knowledge and play skill to eke out advantages okay so with regards to your so your testing process then is that you, you check out a bunch of decks, but you take the lead from somebody who has a very good awareness of the meta game, and they, they if they say pick this deck, you pick this deck. What do you think you might do if you didn't have someone telling you what to do? Um, basically, I'd play a lot more. Um, I'd what I'd what we used to do is um, like I used to be on a team with me, a guy called Dave Sutcliffe and a guy called Rich Hagen, and we just basically built up. Up essentially what we thought all the meta game was and then play, gr just ground games against each other as to which ones to play and what the best one was and then a lot of the time I'd pick the ones that have the most options in them and gave me the most ability to outplay people because like most Magic players I'm arrogant and think I'm better than people um, and then essentially that's what we'd do i just like grind more games and I would like I said like I'm hoping to be able to take advantage of that, do that myself now anyway, which is why I've started the stream and I'll play a lot more constructed and do the online dailies. And like, there's so much information available. Like, they've taken away the daily debt list, but you still get some debt lists. And if you want to take the time, you can just go through the dailies and watch the replays afterwards and see what all the people that are. Like, you only have to like look who's gone four and all, watch the, their matches and see what they played against in the last round. And you've essentially got all the four and all decks and the three and one decks. And there's not that much variety. There's like maybe 10 different decks and then you just go from there and 
work it out from there. Okay, so I guess in summary, like if there's a, a deck which is clearly the most powerful deck and you've identified it as that, you'll go for that. But in the absence of something which is just ridiculous, you know, your core blade, your fairies, your, yeah. your modern jund, you'll go for the thing that gives you the most options because that's that suits your play style more. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't sacrifice the best deck just for that. Oh no, like if, if the best deck was the mono red deck, I'd play the mono red deck. But when the best deck is like, like a lot of the decks are very similar in power level and like the mono red deck isn't necessarily that much better than the near aggro deck i think it's just got slightly more reach with it plays more burn basically um so you're less susceptible to dying to them just making thrag tusks and wrathing you repeatedly um and the aristocrats deck like i said has is, is basically just playing a lot of very powerful cards and has the way to win really quickly um so, like I said, if, if it was just like the mono red deck was the best deck to play, I'd play that. But because they're both very similar, I like the fact that the Aristocrats deck feels like it. Especially when you've got to take into account that with it being eight rounds, you're not just going to play against the decks you think you're going to play against. There will be some people that have the random decks. And the mono red deck could just be real. Like, even though it's got reach and a bit of play in it, it doesn't have as much. So you're much more likely to lose to the random deck that you weren't prepared for there's less flexibility when you yeah. don't know what you're coming up against okay so i think that will that's pretty good for now so really in, in summary i'd say that you, you've enjoyed streaming and it's forced you to to actually play constructed rather than just you know yeah. play about with drafts and it's helped you because it's made you do it the testing and it's helped everyone else because they get to watch so what was your what was your channel name sorry um, it's nr77 which is e n a r r 77 uh, at twitch.tv yeah, well, it, it's it's on Twitch as well, yeah. dot TV, the the website. So we're, I mean, I'm I'm going to be uh, tuning in and hurling abuse with like with the best of them. So uh, uh, yeah. I, I hope people watching learn from it. It's been really good. Yeah, cool. Oh, well, thanks very much for joining us, and uh, good luck in the next round. Thanks very much.